welcome. Um, we will have a quick interaction to set you off, and then we will log out until we are settled to have a substantive lecture. Um, this was quite a short notice, but it is still it is still useful. Kindly get yourself muted, dear friend. Get yourself muted quickly. Get yourself muted, please. Great. So if you are seeing my screen, then we can quickly walk ourselves through the course outline. And then we'll be done for the day. Write down a reading research assignment I'm giving you to set you off. You could write it down somewhere. When we meet in person, I'll expect you to have feedback on that, okay? So the question is, what is the mind-body problem? What exactly is a mind body? It's a research question. So I just need you to engage that content. That's what the assignment is meant to do, to, for you to read, so that when we meet, we can interact on that. So what is the mind body problem? How does it arise? How does it arise? And how has it been dealt with by different thinkers? What is the mind-body problem? How does it arise? And how has it been dealt with by thinkers? All right. So it is to guide your reading of the substantive topic one. Now, you have details of our course title, the course code. You know our meeting times. We are still trying to find out what the final registered number of students will be because registration is still open, apparently. So based on the class size, we will determine whether we are able to split to repeat content. The lecture for that, the course is one. So we would have to see how that will be managed in a way that we are not jammed up in one classroom, and yet we are also not overly burdening the lecture or also interrupting, you know, or, or preventing students from having an effective interactive time. So we will see how we manage our in-person lectures. By next week, it will be clearer. We will have a full class size, so we will know whether we are able to split or we can do one session in person and then another online. So let's give ourselves some time for that. For main campus, city campus is relatively straightforward because they have lesser numbers. Okay, course description. One of you read quickly, please. If you can see my screen, then read the course description, please. This course explores more central problems of philosophy as this an course academic. Explores, thank you, but go, go over that. This course explores what? Central problems of philosophy. Some, some, okay, some of them, not small. Yeah, go ahead. As an academic discipline and this discusses some attempts made by philosophers at addressing them. It builds on the course PHCL 102 philosophical questions which introduced learners to the general nature, methods and approaches to the study of philosophy and devoted some attention to fundamental questions of the discipline. The course provides a more detailed presentation of the core problems from the various fields of philosophy and engages a more rigorous and deeper analysis of them by situating the discussion of temporary and practical real life situations. Thank you very much. That was a good read. So it's a straightforward thing. We are building on what we engaged in level 100. We raised questions 
that are typically labeled as philosophical questions. And then we looked at the various ways of asking those questions, metaphysical perspective, epistemological, uh, all the others. This course will build on that, but it will engage not just questions, but questions that have, if you like, matured. They become more strengthened because it's difficult to find responses to them. So they have become like problems. Problems here meaning they don't go away. The responses you give to them still do not deal with them uh, satisfactorily. So there are still different perspectives to those questions. In other words, even when we respond to them, we give alternative views responding to those questions, the two perspectives don't agree. The two contending views, sometimes even three or four, don't agree on the proposed you know, response given. So they have become like problems. They don't go away. And you will see them as we go ahead, uh, the mind-body problem, uh, rationalism, empiricism, uh, what's the other one? I mean, all those various perspectives, we'll engage them. That's what the course will do. So we'll ask deeper questions of philosophy. They are no longer questions. The question should have an answer. That satisfies everyone, if you like, you see, if you want to. Uh, explain it in simple terms. But if it is a problem, if it's a philosophical Madrani. problem, keep yourself muted or we end the what? class. Madrani. Keep yourself muted. Else dissolve it and meet next week. You see? It's a simple thing. We are in class. So you enter, you mute yourself. Just like if you enter the lecture hall, you're not coming to a lecture hall chatting. And then when you are sitting, you are chatting. It's not done. So I will not pamper you, you are in level 200 now, respectfully. So you enter the class, you are muted, you engage the content. When we are done, you can have all the chats. I want to warn again, please. We are going through the course outline, which has already been given to you on Sakai. I just want to make sure that I take you through so that you know what you are about, and then we are done for the day. I already sent out a reading assignment, if you like, a reading. A something to guide your reading. If you have that, you read around that. And it's a seminar text. You don't struggle to find it at all. Okay. So please, let's maintain the uh, etiquette so that we don't go back and forth, wasting too much time trying to get ourselves, you know, uh, catch us online. That is not for us to do now. Okay. So I was saying that the, the, those questions will be engaging have become problems. You should understand why we call them problems of philosophy. They don't go away. When you say, what is the source of our knowledge? There are people who feel that the source of the knowledge that we have is the, the empirical, in other words, the senses. What we see here, touch, taste, smell, is what grounds our knowledge. Everything we know is sourced from experience, the five senses, that's one view. And so normally the scientific or the empirical sciences depend on that. They will do research, they will they will go to the labs, they will go to the field, they will in interview people to hear and see and taste. And so the psychologists might do that all because that is how they source or they believe that knowledge should be sourced. When you go into an, an, an enterprise, you'll say that, uh, what is your experience in the field? You see, how much have you done in there? How much contact have you had with it? It's, it's ultimately some way, somehow boils down to what the source of knowledge being what experience for one school of thought. Another school of thought will say, what the senses tell us are not real. They're not real. They're not the true knowledge. Our, our senses don't give us what actually is there. So when we are looking for true, unadulterated, absolute knowledge, it cannot be given by the senses. We have to depend on mind. Whatever mind means, that, that raises also uh, in another set of questions to engage. So what? So the question of the sources of our knowledge leads us to two viewpoints. That means the question of the source of knowledge has become a problem. Who, who is right and who is wrong? How will we know that it is raining at a place? We have to experience it. Either we hear, see, touch, taste, or smell. And yet, how do we know that two oranges and, and five oil? How do we know that a bachelor is an unmarried adult male? Or if I had said that a bachelor is a married adult male, you would say, oh, but that is not true. 
I say, oh, I want to show you the bachelor I'm talking about. This particular bachelor who lives next door, he, he, he is married. You will say, but I don't need to see. What you are telling me is already false, even before he started speaking. By just reflecting on the, the statement, a bachelor who has beaten his own wife. I can tell, I don't need to see, hear, touch, taste, or smell anything. That statement is necessarily false, even before observation. So I depend on the meanings, etc., etc. You see, this person will be saying then that the source of our knowledge, how we come to know that may not necessarily depend on what? Observation. I just gave you trivial, accessible examples to help you see why the question of the source of knowledge is a problem. It is no longer a philosophical question. It's a problem in philosophy. And we have already engaged what uh, philosophical questions do. We ask them as if they are abstract until we start applying them to everyday life. So you catch the person red-handed stealing. The rationalists to the extreme eh, will tell you that is still not enough justification to, uh, you know, to met out what instant justice. No, because what you are seeing may be wrong may be adulterated, may be misinterpreted. If we were to depend solely on the senses, then when you saw the thing in the person's pocket, you have every justification to finish him instantly because you have proven, so to speak, that he stole it, but you may not have proven it. So now you see how we are extracting the question of uh, knowledge into everyday life and why it is important for us to see that if it is a problem in philosophy, then we want to be careful how we assume so much quickly based on what we have observed or based on what we have reflected on. So the question of uh, the rationalists and the empiricists as they respond to the source of our knowledge is a problem. That's one of them. There will be others. And so if you have already gone through the course outline, which you should have done, then you will see why we call them problems. And mind-body problem is one of them. I think the very first one that will engage. Now, what do we want to achieve? The goal of this course is what? Another reader, please read it for me. The goal, the course has two goals. First, you will be exposed to some mm -hmm. important philosophical problems in metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, social and political philosophy. With a view to developing a clear understanding of philosophical debates and appreciating their relevance. Second, you will be encouraged to think deeply about these debates to help you formulate and evaluate arguments so that you can arrive at what you take to be the most plausible philosophical responses to them. And consider these, uh, consider how these can be applied to actual human contexts. Excellent. Well read. So you will not just know the problems as we identify them, philosophical problems, friends, not sociological, not psychological, not political, but the philosophical aspect of those questions is what we do here in this course. When you know them, those problems coming from epistemology, if you have revised your level 100, remember this course is building on philosophical questions level 100. So you should know if you know epistemology, you see that we we'll ask questions of epistemology. The one I just discussed with you is one such. We we'll do some ethics. Would we tell a lie to save a life? Would we look at the consequences or we look at the rule underlining the act? If it is wrong, it is wrong. Or we want to look at the consequences so that even if it is a wrong thing we are doing, so but it helps to save a life. So and so on and so forth. Those are ethical questions, social and political. We are looking at how to distribute resources justly in society and in politics. See, so we have looked at all those main branches of philosophy and their sub branches. And in this course, we will show you the problems that arise from them. Is man free at all? We look at that with Ortega. My friend, keep your microphone muted. You may not be able to attend my lecture again. If you do that, I can push you out and ask you out of the class. We have to have some discipline. And we have done some online sessions now. So you shouldn't let us do that. This is a recorded session to upload so others will benefit. You are entering a class. Have that psyche. Please. Otherwise, I'll just tell you when we are ready to meet, we'll come to the lecture hall. 
That is where I can I can easily tell you to get up and walk out. You don't disturb the whole class because you want to chat when others want to learn. You see that? So don't let us be repeating that. Do it in all your lectures. When you enter, get yourself muted. It is a lecture. It's not fanfare. And if you have that psyche, you see that psyche, consciously you will do that. When you are entering a lecture, will you be picking your coin and chatting at, at the entrance to central cafeteria when the lecture is ongoing? And you'll be standing there and say, Charlie, you day, will you be doing that? You won't because psychologically, you tell yourself you are entering a lecture. But as soon as you have an online session to help you yourselves, then you want to abuse it and make it useless. So I won't repeat that notice again. I can fish you out. This is Google Teams, dear friend. So your email is already in the system. We can pull you out like that. And that is it. So don't let me warn again. This is good time that we would have made some progress. I have to repeat the same thing. My dear lady, you read beautifully. So I'm saying that we will engage the problems themselves first. Then now, that's the first goal. The goal is for you to know those problems. So you're, I'll be examining you on that. See that you should know mind-body problems. Why is it a problem? What are the attempts that have been made to resolve them and still they don't seem to work? Why we call them a problem? What is the, what is the problem when we say the problem of what ethics, for example? What can you identify as a fundamental problem related to the question of ethics, right and wrong, okay, social and political and so on? After we identify the problems, which is one of what we want to achieve, the goal, the second bit of what we want to achieve is your ability you see, to formulate and evaluate them. I've told you philosophers don't do just narration, recounting what someone said. Then we don't need to come to lecture. You could just read it online and be okay. The real reward that we give you is your ability to examine those views, evaluate them. Evaluate means place value, judge, judge it. You don't just come and say, I don't think this one person is right, this person is wrong. You have your view that you are contributing and you are showing why this one has that problem. You see, or why this one has a strength or the extent to which this position is defensible than the other. So those ones, when you have your ability to do that, critique, examine, review, contribute is what we reward. Then your ability to do what? To contextualize them. So you're, you're learning the abstract mind-body problem conceptions and the various viewpoint, interactionism, what have you, occasionalism, what has it done? So if you know that, how do we now bring it to practical and essential context? This is very important to me and to every seasoned philosopher, if we will be even relevant at all in our human context, when we don't just sit on an ivory tower and reflect on concepts and then we clap for ourselves that we know it. But after that, then what? Now bring it to actual human context so that people can see the point of the question you asked about the sources of our knowledge, about the question you asked about ethics, social and political philosophy, whatever problem we engage. Can you bring it alive and show that that is why when we have to distribute the resources of the state, for example, we'll have to consider fairness. Does fairness mean equal treatment? Perhaps not. Perhaps yes. Should we treat the pregnant woman at the banking hall the same way we treat the agile, strong youth in the queue, even if the, the youth came earlier than the pregnant woman? If there is an emergency case at the hospital, I'm talking about just social structures and political systems that ensure that there is fairness. Fairness here is what uh, I, I'm, I'm discussing Rawls now, Rawls's view of justice as fairness one of the views that can be considered as you progress in academic study, for example. Eh? It says that a, a just society is one that is fair in its distribution of resources. My point is, if you just say, uh, Raw said that and that and that, and you ended there, you didn't do justice to philosophy. Philosophy is effective when you are able to apply those concepts to actual existential problems. Now I'm quoting Kwame Chechi, whom we engaged extensively in level 100, that you do the abstractions, but then afterwards, let it come alive in everyday human existential issues so that we will see the relevance of why we engage that question. So if we do problems of philosophy, we, we talk about, say, the question of a, a just society or the problem of ensuring justice, 
we learn all that now we can see so at the hospital when the, an emergency case comes someone has a pimple on the cheek so she wants the doctor to help her clean that pimple she's also at the hospital another person has a heart attack he's there then someone is in labor she's there someone just got into an accident and they write the person there i mean the pimple sister was first in the queue but the emergency case i mean the the, the doctors who bring the, or the nurses who push this emergency case ahead. Everybody who, who attend to the emergency case. Why do we do that? Is that equal treatment? No, it's on, on equal treatment, but it is a fair treatment, fairness. So you will now see what the man Ross would have been pro proposing when he says, justice need not be equal treatment of all but it has to be fair treatment because some already start at a disadvantaged position. When we do this, then the discussion on roles becomes real, actualized. Now you see the point the person is making. So certain societies will be giving more, certain contests will have more, and even the more you give them will still not make up. So some ladies will get affirmative action and because of the cultural and social setting, they might come into the university with a gig 17, get admission when maybe a brother from some rich and a well endowed setting, maybe a cry if you like, or Kumasi, cannot get admission with even aggregate six, maybe. I'm just giving a wild example. That would be an application of what? The conceptual matters that we have studied, okay? In actual human society, that's how direct philosophical questions, philosophical perspectives, philosophical viewpoint, eh? how they apply in everyday life. So when we are studying, you will be examined on that. The goal is for you to be able to know the problems. Yes, clap for yourself for that. Well done. But after you know it, your ability to judge those problems, evaluate them, that is. And the evaluations must be based on reason. You know, you just don't evaluate by saying, I don't agree with them. Then you put it down. Or I agree with them. Then you put no. No one can say no, it. Your ability. Not just to say I agree or disagree, but okay, your ability, your ability to, to apply those views, your ability to apply them in everyday life is the third part. The second part that I almost got distracted about because of the interruption by your police who will not listen to anything. The class size is 500 already. If we keep doing this, we can have an effective, I just put it all. I just muted all. I just muted all. All right. So first, know the problems. Second, be able to evaluate and see why one view is perhaps more defensible than the other. And then third, give a, a practical application of what you are studying to everyday life. So you must be able to have a wide, broad, conceptual understanding, which is useful for everyday life. If you don't know how to put the concept into everyday life, you will not do well in my course. That's why I'm emphasizing that. I don't want you to just know the theories and, and pride yourself in it, working around, and Dika said this, and Plato said that. No. I reward the effort, which is the real philosophy of it, the effort at what? Bringing those concepts alive in everyday context. That is what we want you to be able to do, to problem solve, not to just do chew and pour, pass and forget and pass through. That's not philosophy. All right, so if we got that, then we can quickly move on. Those were the ones I wanted to stress a bit more. So the objectives are clear. You have it, the ability to, uh, we, we want you to uh, uh, appreciate the relevance of these questions in everyday life. You must know the questions themselves and appreciate their relevance. We want you to know the traditional schools of thought. Traditional means what has been concretized in philosophy. Some are new areas, but some are entrenched views that if you say you did problems of philosophy or you did uh, undergrad philosophy, you must know them. They are the traditions. You must know rationalism, empiricism, uh, what, what the other, deontology, consequentialism, you see? When you hear that, you should be able to, if I say mention one name that comes up in rationalist uh, tradition or in the rationalist thought, you must immediately be able to lay hands on certain authors quickly. Otherwise, you haven't done, you know, philosophy. So at this preliminary 
fundamental stage of your studies in philosophy, you must know those traditional schools. We want to challenge your minds, I'm on the third point now, to critically reflect, not just reflect, too, but reflect critically. Critically means like we study in level 100, you look at the various aspects of a matter, devoid of emotions. There's too much emotions in the system. People are not thinking respectfully. When you, you let your emotions drive you, I mean, we are emotional beings, so we must have emotions. Plato says we have our appetitive part, we have to eat. It's not everything that has to be logic. But if you are not driven, driven is the one that moves you. Then before long, you take off your shirt in total and be beating the meat because of one city change. Meanwhile, you are supposed to be the intelligent intelligentsia. You see, so you may be right. Your emotions must not lead. It's okay to get angry. <laughs> Bible says, but don't let the anger stay overnight. Don't let the sunset overnight. There's a reason for that. It means by the time you 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 are so angry or so happy, people get so excited, and before they wake up, they are ripped. Sisters, fine, sister, and you're ripping up because of anything, bro. So, so happy that brains stopped working. You see that. <laughs> so you have to manage that emotion and let your mind. I mean, if you are talking church, you say let your spirit. If you are talking, I don't, I don't know. I mean, so mind here referring to what the non-physical part of you. In other words, for some, as we advance, you will see the, the effect of the brain. Let the intel, intellect, whatever label you give it, spirit, soul, whatever, but let the intellect drive the appetite and the emotions. Okay, when you do that, you may be so hungry. But you know that the fact that you are hungry doesn't mean when you see the watch SLS watch that she has mounted over the cell, you are hungry and you must eat. Then you go and you dip your hand inside the watch SLS, like you are eating. Reason must tell you that, yes, I'm hungry. This is food, yes. But it's not mine. And when you take that which is not yours, you will be beaten. So when I say let reason, reflection, critical reflection lead, I'm not saying you, it means that you won't be hungry or you will not get emotions as in anger or the drive for sex, guys or ladies, they will be there. But you have to let reason lead you. We are going to train you to do that. Remember, like I said in level 100, philosophy is a discipline. You are giving skills, tools. That is why all the courses you are doing ultimately will come out and say, either you have an MPhil in philosophy, MPhil in accounts, MPhil in whatever discipline. Why do we call it that? It's a master of philosophy in that course. When you progress further, it will be a PhD in psychology or PhD in uh, business or something. PhD means a doctor of philosophy in that discipline. Why? Philosophy is a skill. So as you advance, you become better at it. So if you are doing philosophy proper, then you are, you are having a first degree in philosophy, then you get a second degree in philosophy. It means you are getting an MPhil in philosophy, a master of philosophy in philosophy, you should be better. You should be a better breed, friends, at how you do what? You do critical reflection, question asking, your posturing to matters. Emotions, less, less of the emotions, more of what? Critical reflection, the skill of analysis, raising critical arguments, not emotional ones that are not sustainable dear friends. So we will develop that skill even at this tender age in you. And we'll look out for that in the way you are writing, the way you are speaking, your posture to matter. That's why I'm a bit hard on folks right now. Look at the time you've lost. You have opportunity to engage even your course outlines, right? They should come and babysit you. Are you critically with who is suffering in this? So you should have a different posture than the babysitting one, which we will not entertain at all. Okay, so that's one of the Objectives. Objective means the, the measurable stuff that we will use to attain the goal. The fourth point, if you're still looking on my screen, is to inculcate the qualities of open-mindedness. We want our students to be open-minded. This course will teach you that open-mindedness means you are you you allow for different views. You don't say in your mind that oh, this one can never be. No, it's not a good skill. You have to have a mind that is open. Now I'm being total logos, eh? Open to different viewpoints. Doesn't mean you accept all, not at all. Then you are not 
critical mind, but you are open to hearing. You have to hear people out. You are objective, means you don't put yourself in the matter. You've done all this. You deal with it. This a matter on the table, not how you feel about it. Because how you feel about it is different from how the lady who just read, read feels about it. And it's different from how another person feels. So if you put feelings inside, we will never feelings will never help us do anything. I have to deal with the matter itself, objectivity, as much as possible. There will always be a relational tie. And we'll discuss that when we look at idealism as a response to the mind-body problem. You will see that some idealists are arguing that the objectivity of a matter is still subjective. It still depends, it's relational to the person speaking. So there might not be a truly objective viewpoint. We'll see how we are supposed to take that. If what you are saying is true and everything is relative, then what they are saying is uh, relative. We are back where we started. So we'll engage those questions. And then we want to teach you what independence of thought. You can stand alone, one, by this. If you have a reasoned grounds for taking that position, you should be able to stand alone. There, you know that oftentimes people want to be part of the whole, which is fine. You have to cooperate. You have to integrate. You have to conform. But conformity that is unreasoned, you don't have a reasoned ground for doing that, is cheap. The whole society may be, may be following something that is false. I keep telling my students, scientifically, we had, we had subscribed to the view that the earth is in the center of the universe, the geocentric view, for many, many, many years, thousands of years, friends. Everybody thought that was the correct view until the heliocentric view was discovered, that it is rather the sun that is in the center of the universe. We have to understand that a majority of people, the whole population could be wrong about a matter. That's why you shouldn't say, oh, everybody says so, so. Appeal to the masses, we've learned that in critical thinking already. Independence of thought doesn't necessarily mean being a, a, a you, there, you are always against the status quo, no. So far as there's a grounds for it, don't be afraid to stand alone and be willing to what, present that perspective that you have so that others may share in it or may help you see it differently, okay? So we teach you that to have an independence of thought in this world that now everybody just wants to follow crowd and everybody is being let down the dream and nobody's saying anything. It's problematic, not the philosopher. Okay, last but one, see how much time I'm spending on the objectives because that is where you'll be tested so that we can tell whether you met the goal of the course. To, de to develop the scale of rational, coherent and consistent argumentation watch that accommodates other views without necessarily accepting or endorsing them. Very important. We don't say we are so open-minded that everything that comes, we have swallowed. Everything that is coming, we are not gullible. We are not training you to be gullible, you see? So we want you to be accommodating of other views so you can hear them. But when you hear, that is when the other skill developed in you comes up critiquing and giving reasoned examination of views, then contributing to the discussion and above all what contextualizing that discussion in what a coherent and consistent manner. Not that you start by saying, I feel that the rationalist view is defensible. Before you end it, it is not independent. It is not indefensible. We don't know what you're saying any longer. Okay. So we want you to be coherent. You have to uh, reason rationally. When I say rationally here, I don't mean take the rationalist view. This is not the generic use of the word rational. You have to think about the matter so that you can give a response that is shareable by all. Then now people can either agree or disagree with you. Take note of these very important pointers. Then the very last objective highlighted there, to develop in the learner the scale of what? Problem solving through philosophical analysis. There are so many problems, so many problems in society. <laughs> now, in the church, in politics, in governance, everywhere problems. Look at what is happening in Ukraine and Russia. Is it not a problem? Why are the thinkers? <laughs> I heard someone say last time, I think they were repeating what a, a, a clergy person said in the past. You have heard that also. And, and it is played and people laugh about it. There are problems everywhere. Look at your education this year. 
someone has to or some people have to sit down and attempt to do what we are going to teach you to do now my dear friends the attempt at solving problems how by the skill of philosophical analysis, analyze the problems, dear friends, <laughs> okay? When you analyze it, you are able to give a workable response to problems, not cut and paste, not trying to make it look like it is gone. You see how some fathers can say, hey, I said, sit down. This is the father speaking to the son. I said, sit down, sit down. Then the son is trying to say, oh, daddy, you're, you're short. Hmm? Your shorts, the back of your shorts is torn. I just wanted to tell you that when you turn, and maybe that is a teacher, when you turn, the class is laughing at you. So I wanted to point out to you that maybe I won't turn, I'm a catcher. I want to tell you, cover it, go ahead. And I'm, 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 sit down, sit down. So <laughs> the child sits down. Who is embarrassed? You see, you haven't solved any problem. Maybe you think you are disciplining, but you didn't really. We have to learn the skill of solving problems how through philosophical analysis. Philosophical, otherwise, you tell the child to sit in their heart, they are standing and looking at you. What did you achieve? Okay, learning outcomes. Unless there's a first thing. We are still going through our course outline. The learning outcomes. At the end of the course, the learner should be able to recognize, define, demonstrate everything I've said so far, the problems. Then, two, what? You must be able to show why the problems are even problems at all. In other words, you see that this is what one, one posi the position taken by one school of thought in response to this problem, but it still doesn't deal with the other position. So now we are in a fix. That's why we say it's a problem. I'm giving you instances of that. Rationally says this, empiricity says that. You can't easily say the, the empiricist is wrong. Neither can you say the rationalist is wrong. That's why we don't know what to do. Hush, it's a problem. Okay. Three, you might be able to defend whichever view you feel is defensible by proffering your own views. Not saying, well, I agree with everything that uh, our class rep said. <laughs> I think I agree with all. Hey, is that how to just come in and I can care? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you want to do? Better than that, friends. You must have grounds to teach you or demand of you to give reason grounds for the position you take. That is how you develop material that builds a nation. No people that just follow because everyone is going. Hey, 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 hey. There's a whole crowd of people are running from a gate, UG campus now, eh? the main gate to registry. They see people going, hey, hey, hey. No, they also join, hey, hey, hey. You also take something, hey, hey. Some people following, they are going, sister, we are going, yo, let's go, let's go. You also join, then we are all going. Then they ask you, where are we going? They say, I um, yeah, I saw people going, so I'm also going. So we ask, you see what we are doing to ourselves in society? The crowd is going. They may be going for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. Wherever they are going, you don't know. You haven't asked. You don't have a view, but you are going so. <laughs> we don't want to train intellectuals that will come out of society. Otherwise, we are doomed. The next one, how you relate the problems to personal, national, and global context. I already said that. And then you apply those skills, they are skills, mind you. They are skills, techniques, tools. When you get them, they apply them to everyday problems from your marital home, that is if you want to marry, your church, your cultural setting, government, if you are the DC, you are making decisions about the finances of the state, you are signing contracts between Ukraine and Russia, you know what you are doing and the implications there. They are skills that you develop now. You never know. Maybe you become Kofi Annan of Lesnin, the world president. That's how I call him, United Nations president from Ghana, Kofi Annan. Did you ever think he'll get there when he was at Neji? And the teacher was spank, uh, spanking him and shouting at him, count now, Kofi. Count now, from Nassau, when he was doing that, did he know he would be the United Nations uh, secretary general? Then he did Ghana proud. You may get there if you have to deal with problems. All the way from what I said, from your family to the department to wherever you find yourself, the banking institution, go ahead or be a, a child. If you have to deal with problems, administrator of the university or something, how do you bring these skills to bear? Which skills are these? These philosophical skills we are teaching you: analysis, reflection, question asking, 
dealing with the fundamental problems, the assumptions on which the whole dispute or the whole proposal is based. What is the assumption? When the assumptions are wrong, what you are building on it will not stand, friends. So the philosopher trains people to do that at different levels. And at this level 200, we expect you to have that. You know the method of instruction, it is there. We are hoping to have more of the in-person sections. But if we have too large a class, then we'll make use of the online as well to augment content so that we don't have to be struggling classes. If we split the class into two, the same lecture delivered here would have to be delivered there. That challenge can be met, uh, mitigated if we have the recorded lecture uploaded online, then we use the sessions to do interactions and what have you. It saves you and us. There's a common content. There isn't any bias intended or unintended and all that. And we save ourselves of getting crowded in one room, et cetera. So we'll see about that. Hopefully by next week, we should have a firm figure and then we can move on. But we will not wait without any direction, okay? So that's the method of instruction. We have engaged already in level 100. Nothing much will change. You do your one page critical summary of every topic. When I come to class and I want to test whether students have engaged the content, I will take that one page summary and you know I will grade it and report. It is for you. So when you read the topic, you do a one page summary that you did. Okay, for your own sake. Uh, it is my expectation that you'll be in all lectures and tutorials if the lectures come on. Assessment and grading, continuous assessment, that includes IA, class marathons, all the things that we do. We know that total 50%. Take time and go through the full course after. This was done in November. Okay, then your final exam will also total 50%. Five zero. Okay, that's the breakdown. The assessment one ten percent, assessment two ten percent, SM test twenty percent, group presentation ten percent for the continuous assessment. Okay, think that. Uh, okay, plagiarism. You know, University of Ghana's uh, focus on integrity at all levels. Take note of that. Then the reading list. This is very important to you. Look at them, Russell, Miller, Beige, Miles, Descartes. I mean, they're out there for you. I haven't compiled any reader I'm talking about handouts. I haven't. Anyone that does that in my name, when I find the person out, I'll give you to the disciplinary committee. They'll deal with you. We have challenges when we are pulling content from authors. I am a publisher, I'm publishing. I won't be happy if folks take my content and publish it somewhere and people are doing they are selling my brain without records to me. The university takes serious exception to that. So find the ebooks, those that we have permission for, you see that they'll be uploaded for you can find them at Sakaba where one person takes people's you know photocopy content from different books and puts them together and says, here is it, come and pay for it. It is got free. The university will not don't bring any handout to the class. Or don't let me see it. It is tiffy. I have already stated that. Why? You get all oh, these are very seminar texts. So you are lucky. All the content you are dealing with are not difficult to find. There are ebooks for them. There are research contents there. I'll provide slides for you as we study. But I want you to do the research work. You also go to BAM Library, go to the department's library for, for your fundamental courses, levels 100 and 200, even up to 300. Most of the content should be available. Okay? You find them and you engage. I think your TAs can also be helpful, but I have not authorized anyone, including your TAs, to compile any book. I don't want issues with the university. So it's recorded. I'm repeating it again. Find the content to your research. The books are the library. Unfortunately, you may not have plenty. So you read, you, you get, check them against your notes, like the mind-body problem. Right after the lecture, just Google mind-body problem. You see the e-content e you have on them. They are accessible PDFs online. Okay, then you read and then you come to class and I help you with the guide. So weekly lecture topics, you're almost done. Introductory matters, I've done that with you. Prefatory remarks, I've told you 
how you should posture yourself for the semester. Okay, it is very important for you. So you thank me as always when the semester ends. Class culture, I've stressed on that. Attendance, groups, classes. Some, some of you are asking to, uh, whether we have group one and group two. You have a one lecture and in other courses. So we have to manage it well for effective teaching so that one half of the class is not unduly advantaged over the others. If we have to meet in person and we have a lot of them, supposed to be mostly in person for yourselves so we can encourage interaction, okay? If we have to split, then we may split to take questions and interactions, but the content itself, I feel we must have, we must have what, a common content delivered so we can use our own lines to do that so that we will have the real lecture delivered for the over 500 or so that we already have for main campus. We haven't included city campus yet, see that. Then when we meet in class, it will be to interact, reflect on them. When I say in class, in person, whether online or in person, they are put in class. The, this one, the attendance will be recorded. Okay, since it is a takeoff from our strike that we can't even tell where we stand now, see that. We want to take off slowly. But we, we are hoping that the ampas will settle. No lecture is happy staying at home, not a single lecture. That's what we do for a living. <laughs> Who wants to stay at home? But why are you in school, my dear friend? You are in school so you learn and become somebody in the future so that you can earn something that is befitting of what you have attained. Critical analysis, see that. So it is not clear yet where we stand, but we hope that it won't be too messy going forward. Messy here meaning M-E-S-S-Y. And so let's thread that way until next week when we can concretize stuff on whether we'll split our class into two. I'm talking about the in-person class. The online, we can take up to 1,000 students, so we are not worried. But the question and answer time, where I'll stand before you, and then you also want to ask, if we have to do a marathon or whatever, I can tell whether you are there. We can plan on that starting from the following week. For now, Mondays, main campus now, in Central Cafeteria, 9.30 to 11.20 is the time. We have another one on Tuesdays. I'm not sure we can meet it's that. It's Okay. Then class reps, then TAs, you know your TAs already, yeah, they won't change. It's still uh, TA Douglas, TA Derek, TA Prince. We met them, no, we did our uh, element or model. Excuse me, no, you haven't met them. <laughs> you are fresh level 200, so TA Douglas, you met them in the book. 200, 200. Keep your microphone muted, friend. So course outlines, course syllabus, resources, what are you? We are all already. They are all already on your screen. Okay. If you don't have it on the screen now, you, you can still see it already on Sakai. It has been there since school reopened. I post my course outlines early enough. So they have always been there. You can go through it and settle in. Then I said I introduced next week's lecture. And you see in the bracket there, reading assignment. So it's not something. Ad hoc. The assignment I just gave is not an ad hoc thing like something I'm coming to. It's already planned in your course outline. That is how the lecture is supposed to go. And the question I'm asking you is on what? Next week's lecture, the substantive lecture one. See that on what? The mind body problem. Any questions? No, if you have a question, no, 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 no. If, if you have a question, shoot, shoot up your hand so that I can see. I've not seen a hand up. Do you know how to do that? If you have to shoot up your hand, <clears throat> excuse me, you go to, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, precious, go ahead. <laughs> you had a question, your hand just went down again. It's a question on mute and speak, precious. If it wasn't a question, then it's fine. Please, any questions before I finish with the course outline and we, we are done for the day. If you have a question, you will find the, uh, yeah, I see two hands now. Portia, Portia, is your question ready? Uh, do you have a question now? Yes, please. Go ahead, Portia, go ahead. Okay, so, doc, please, does it mean that we would have to make our own notes, like when we go to the BAM library, we are supposed to make our own notes about the reading assignment you just gave. Mm. The assignment says, 
what is the mind body problem you see that it is a yeah. main topic we are going to engage or discuss with you but i need you to have seen the content because there's the raw material there it is not something that is hidden. Even right now, you finish the very phone or gadget you are holding. If you Googled mind body problem, you see to give you so much. It's called research. Then the students will read and have a background to the topic. When you come to class, I am going to give you slides, in other words, notes to guide your reading so that you don't read some, some students own content that he or she has uploaded online. You see that which is not uh, authentic. So you'll be guided. Mm -hmm. But you will get mm -hmm. materials, different authors speaking to the mind-body problem. The problem itself is not an issue. It is the deliberations around it that the, the lecture is there to guide you to. So just like Bible quotation, you can have King James Version, NIV, what have you. But the scripture content will be there. Then some will say, no, 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 this is what they didn't interpret the Greek version. Well, the, the Hebrew should have been this, that. But then the raw text, John 3, 16, for God's will have the world is there. You will read it, but written differently. That is where I come in as your lecturer to help you. So the assignment says, what is this, this uh, problem in philosophy that is described as what the mind-body problem? That was the first question. See, then I said, what are... Uh, Read the second part of the question for me. I've closed so my how, how does it arise and then how has exactly. it been involved? Exactly. So there, there are three step questions. And if you attempt at engaging that in your research to write a response to this, you will see that you have a firm grip of the general understanding of that problem. Then now we will engage it as a lecture. That's all I want. So just write, read around it and write the mind body problem. Problem simply means so and so and so. You see that when we can precious, the response may not necessarily be the same as yes. Porsche's own or as uh, Rachel's own. You see, it will not be exactly the same, but you will be speaking around the same thing. That's how we study. So I want you to do that. I okay. hope that. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Let me take Porsche, then I'll take Rachel. Porsche, go ahead. Doctor, please, when will we be having our face-to-face uh, -face class? What does the cost uh, open then? What does the timetable say? My dear Portia, you are muted. What does the timetable say? Posh, do you have the timetable? No, Doctor. Hey. Do you have the course outline? Yes. Did you look at the course outline, please? No, doctor. But they were posted for you to look at. So please kindly do that. Eh? You have all the details there. Nothing has changed. OK. okay. All right. Okay. Let's, let me take Rachel. Rachel, go ahead. Dr. Maus, please, I yes. see a um, group presentation. Yes. Please, will, you, will, will we? We receive the questions you'll, you'll do, later. You will do group presentation, uh, my dear Richard. <laughs> you will do it. So the question, okay, so you give us the questions later. My dear sister, you will do group presentation. <laughs> you understand me? Don't worry your head yeah. over how, how we'll conduct it. It will be a group okay. presentation. Uh -huh. okay. Maybe I can even do it in class spontaneously. Okay. You understand? But there will yes. be groups. I could just enter class and say, okay, today our marathon, the marathon, when I say marathon for you and I and your class, you understand that. Okay, we have had some in the past. So I come and say, today's marathon, we'll do it in groups. I want groups of three, sit in threes. Quick, 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 quick. Everyone is sitting sit in threes. I said, so we are doing X, Y, and Z. And we take off. It can be, it can be done that it's still a group presentation. I could give it to you to go home and go and do. I could give assigned groups. And then within the group, everyone has a question they are doing. Then you present a mark and then we use an aggregate for the three. Spontaneous. There, it will be group presentation. You come and present on it. Okay. okay. See that the visibility of some of these things depends on the numbers. When we are starting the, the semester, we don't know the number of students we we'll have. You see, you don't feel for your lecturer sometimes. You, you don't decide how many students you should have. I wish I could say I, I put a cut off, a ceiling, 50 students. Beyond that, I won't teach. Would that be fair to you? Well, almost 600 plus who want to do philo again. Why? <laughs> All of you have come back. Eh? So if you want to uh, uh, 
you know, put content to what you mean by group work and say, okay, so every group will be six people. And then this is it. six people means you use the whole 13 weeks doing group work. You won't finish. Because if each, each group will present even 15 minutes, you have only two hours a week for that course. You see that? I'm just trying to show you just for one course. Uh -huh. So we have to look at the finished group of uh, students that are, are being given to us and then look at how we will still ens ensure that an effective and meaningful group work is done. Not that we just put it there, but there will be a group work component. I can assure you of that, but we have to see the numbers we have. Then I, I will tell you whether I'm giving you to you to go and sit at home and meet somewhere and write it, or I'll give it to you so you create an online virtual group and be working in tandem with your reading and what have you, okay? So we'll do group work. That's why it's captured on the course app. That's our working document. So we'll do that, push. Is it okay? Let me take yeah. up one. Great, Abwadi, go ahead. Abwadi, you're muted. Okay, Bismarck, go ahead. Have I been muted? Yes, um, <laughs> Doc. Go ahead, Bismarck. Please, when, okay. Please, when you were describing um one of the objectives, you made mention of um heliocentrism or heliocentrism, yeah. Heliocentric view, yeah. It just means that yes, trans in the center of the universe, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So I want to ask whether there has been an opposition um concerning that terminology or that phenomenon. Currently not yet. Currently we all agree that the sun is at the center of the universe, isn't it? And then all the other planets are, you know, orbiting the sun. That's what we believe. Maybe in some thousand years to come, scientists will, will find out that, oh, it wasn't so. Apparently one is at the top and one is whatever. But that, I'm showing you how our senses could have quote and unquote, deceived us all these years. At least when we thought it was a geocentric view, it took thousands of years to discover, so to speak, that it wasn't so. But that information came through what? The senses. Just to show you why you can't easily rubbish the empiricist rationalist debate, this uh, contention, by saying that, oh, but this one, but the things that the CC it is standing here, why should we go and trust uh, our mind or something? It is not a straightforward matter like that. Okay. I just brought that in for you to see. So currently, I mean, let's use another even typical example. How did people think that a sickle cell patient will not live beyond a certain number of years in the past? He said, oh, if someone is a sickle cell uh, anemic, you know, you know, sickle cell, then the person cannot live beyond 18 years. By what? By research, by what the empirical sciences have discovered. Is it so now? No. No, 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 no. Yeah. So some, when you see the contents, the debate, they have practical implications. And the doctor says, I, in all my 33 years of practice. Those of you who have done critical thinking with us already, you know, I've gone through some of these examples. The doctor says, all oh, my 33 years of experience, anybody that enters my, my, I mean, that I find this on their lab report that they have X, Y, and Z, they die the next 30 minutes. So I've seen this X, Y, and Z on your report. What is he telling? Go home and die. Then the person goes home and doesn't die. Haven't it happened several? So you are seeing things, you have observed something, you have experienced what happened with the COVID vaccines. You see, some of them were not working, I'm told. I haven't followed it too much. I mean, so then they say booster, then they boost, and then maybe there's a booster, and first was this, and then Omicron, malaria. First you say chloroquine, then after chloroquine, they say all oh, those are based on research, empirical studies. That's why it keeps changing. HIV, they say you died three years or something. Some people have it, and they are walking around, of course, because they have an antidote. So I'm just saying that when another viewpoint says the true knowledge is not necessarily given by the experience, the five senses, they have basis for rejecting that. That's why the debate or the discussion or the contention between rationalists and empiricists is a problem. Problem meaning that we can't take one side and reject the other or take this and reject the other easily. It generates a contention. That's why it's still a philosophical issue being deliberated upon. I hope that helps her watch. Let's take Priscilla. Yeah. Great. Priscilla, go ahead. 
Um, yes, madam. I wanted to um, ask, groups were created on Sakai for us to join. I wanted to know if those groups would be dissolved. Please, has it been dissolved, Priscilla? No, madam. No, Do as you have been instructed. If I want it dissolved, I'll tell you I've dissolved it. You see, okay. It's, it helps everybody the, with the back and forth. Eh? Don't preempt okay. what the lecture will see. Okay. I have put out a notice. I say sign up for groups at site info. I haven't brought another notice that cancels that. I haven't said okay. that. Uh -huh. So you have to just do that for your own sake. All right. Okay. Let's take. Uh, oh, thank you. Actually, your hand is. You are welcome. Your hand is still up. Is there another question? Okay, if it's the previous one, then we can we can quickly move on. Those who may not know how to raise their hands or may may be struggling a little with teams, it's not a big. Hey, it's nothing. This thing is not. If you don't know it, it's nothing. Ask your friend. Charlie, how did you raise your hand? Yeah, I don't know how to. It's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. Huh? You just ask your friend. Oh yeah, they say let's go to teams. Okay, if I want to raise my oh, it's just like Zoom. Look for the thing that's done today, and there's nothing wrong with that. Learn, okay? Learn anything and everything. We never finish learning. Don't feel embarrassed about it. Don't hide in the room and then I wanted to ask a question, but I don't know how to raise my hand. This online, thing, I don't like it. It is not going to change. Online has come to stay for many things. You become a president somewhere very soon, and you will need it. So better learn it now, okay? Ask your friends; they will help you out. Okay. So lecture two, I'm, I'm sharing the screen still. Sources, responses, you see idealism all in that lecture. You should have read well. See the references and questions that matter. You find it at the BAM library, you find it at our department as well, if it is there. Otherwise, just Google it or look for ebooks on it. Sometimes when you even enter it, you see all these references I've given you at the top, they should have it. The problem of reality and appearance. We did that with Plato. This one you will do Russell. This text, this this paper, you will find it the full PDF at various websites and various uh, ebook uh, access point. It's just straightforward there. This topic too shouldn't struggle at all to get it. The next one is the problem of the community versus the individual. I remember pessimism. I don't know if I engaged you on that. I think I did. This one will focus more on the problem itself, the community or the individual. Yechi. And then now you can build on the, the one that I gave you. This, this my paper is online. It just built on Jetty. This Jetty paper, you can find it, person and community. There are plenty of copies in our departmental library. You can also find it online, I think. Cultural identity in a multicultural context. This one, we should be able to copy them and give to you because the, the copyright is University of Ghana. But you can still get the book at the department, this brown book. My paper in there should do some justice to that topic for you. The problem of certainty can't in him. These are seminar texts all over the place. Millers, questions that matter, I'll have it. It will just build a little on what you know from level 100, rationalism and empiricism, but this one builds on it to show you the problem of certainty, okay? What can we be certain of? Are there analytics, synthetic to those things, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the self, free will, and moral responsibility. Remember, we take that. Remember the existentialist thinkers that we had. This will just, like I've said, this topic, this uh, course is building on philosophical questions. So if you had a good foundation in your philosophical questions, and most of you did proudly so, then this should be a build up for you. The self, remember Locke, John Locke, consciousness, self-consciousness and memory, establishing who you are, sameness and difference. Okay, that question, this time reconciled with whether you are a free person, okay, and whether we can hold you morally responsible. So is that two or if like three and one topics held together for you to now integrate them? It's not, these are not new topics. They are just building on it and, and engaging the deeper questions associated with them. Then we'll have our revision. Your interim assessment tests, your your exams and what have you will all be communicated. We hope that we are able to keep to the seventh week. It's not clear what the seventh week is now. We hope that everybody that must do what they must do will do it quickly so that you don't suffer for that. And on that note, I think we can end. Any questions, please? Mohammed Hussein, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Mohammed. Doc, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah. 
Dog, please. Uh, the initial stage, some of us had challenges with our internet connections. Don't worry. Please, with, 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 with regards to the reading assignment. This is recorded. Oh, you have a question. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Please, please. With regards to the reading assignment, please, I didn't get the second and the question, the third what, question. What is the mind-body problem? Did you get that one? Yes, please. Then the second part is, what leads to that question? How does it arise? Okay, you see. okay. And then the third part is how has it been dealt with by thinkers? Okay, okay, madam. Okay, okay. it's not anything Thank that you, you have to do and look mm -hmm for. Okay, I don't. I just want you to have a certain posture. That's all. It's not right, anything. Right. You have just started a lecture, so you can be examined, but you, you yes. can be assessed on how you are making effort at acquiring information. You see that? So it's a research skill I want to develop in you. You have to feel responsible that you should get knowledge. Then someone can guide you. Know that me, I'm sitting, I paid my school fees, I'm waiting. Where are they coming? These people, you see that <laughs> it, it, will, it will hurt you in the long run. Okay. So just make an effort at that, Mohammed. Good. Abuaji, right, okay. welcome. Go ahead, Abuaji. You are muted, Abuaji. Abuaji, you are muted, though. So we can't hear you if you are speaking there. Oh, okay. All right. So thank you very much. I'm sure that when we meet in person, or hopefully when we engage again, we can, we can. Let's pray hard, though, like I said, so that everybody does what they have to do quickly. We just went through course outline. No lecture has gone on, you see. But if everything happens, then we can, we can get a well-structured class, at, uh, what, class reps, group, group leaders, uh, whatever, all those. If we need platforms, we can get all that done so you can also finish your school and finish them well i wish you well look out for the link on sakai all the best and take care bye 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, bye bye. <laughs> Precious Osei Opoku, you are supposed to leave the platform. Okay, bye bye. Hey, <laughs> Obi. Hey, <laughs> 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 All the best, Warren. So now we call the new course for now. So I end. Why end your team, madam? Mama boy, now this is a move you move to end. Eh, we move to end. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Oh, I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Huh? You didn't do anything about it. My, I'm missing, I'm missing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.